This postcard from the Maritime Inn is from Sean Henry out there in Canada. Oh, this is smeared. This must have gotten wet. Well, it rains a lot out there. This is a contender for the blandest postcard in Washington State, even though the hotel is quite pleasant. Greetings from Gig Harbor. Gig Harbor. Beautiful place. Sam says thank you. Oh. Hey, basement dwellers. Hope you like the cartoon kitty on this postcard. My daughter colored for you. Oh, that's sweet. Look at that. It says something more there. For all the years of solid entertainment. Solid. Here's a scene it for you. The Cat from Outer Space, 1978. It's a silly... It's as silly... It's silly as the title sounds, but somehow charming too, Sam. <coughs> this is Parliament House over there in Australia. This is from Therese. Greetings, basement dwellers. I recently visited our nation's capital, Canberra, to have morning tea with the Prime Minister as all Australians are required to do at least once in our lifetime. <laughs> Question for you both. Favorite political movie? <clears throat> um, you like that Z movie? I saw Bullworth in the theater. Yeah? I liked it at the time. I imagine it hasn't held up. I keep meaning to see it. In the Loop was my first experience with Armando Iannucci, who I oh. think is one of the most brilliant writers in showbiz today. Yeah, That's definitely one of the best. And to go alongside a Dr. Strangelove. And we have a couple of envelopes to open here. Why don't you take that one, and I'll take this one. Ah, David in Poland. David, thank you again for the unboxing show notes that you made. I will get them up on the site at some point. I just haven't I have not done it yet. I apologize. How about some cheese? <laughs> don't mind if I do. Greetings, solid cheese pun. How about some cheese? I remember Matt being puzzled by this obsolete idiom from the past, but it's never been solved on the show. The other day I was watching On the Town where Jules Munchen says, and I quote, How about some cheesecake? And as a joke, bears his shin for a female photographer. I think that might be the same thing. Oh, how about some cheese? Right. I don't remember what that was from. Yes, yes. Yeah, some old 30s movie. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think that might be the same thing. No need to thank me, although a thank you would be nice. Nope. Well, cheesecake uh, is an American term for, like, when a woman kind of shows off her body. They call those cheesecake photos. So when that guy says, how about some cheesecake, and he shows off his shin, it's yeah. not sexy as a woman in a bikini. For some reason, we called men beefcake. See you, Leicester. Stay cheesy. Dave the Pole. This postcard is edible. Not. He gave us a not. <laughs> then... <laughs> That town, which is too cool for me to pronounce. Ahoy there and on the old leather couch. Here's another architectural wonder from my hometown, which you can't pronounce. It's a footbridge that looks like a donut. Unfortunately, it tastes nothing like it. I'll show myself out. <laughs> David Mamsher of Poland. P.S. Mid and post credit scenes, part of a movie or not? They're part of the movie. I mean, yeah. I think the credits are part of a movie. They yeah. choose the music for a reason, and they choose how the credits look and the way they're presented to match the tone of the movie. So I would say all that's part of the movie. I don't know if Ferris Bueller invented it, but it wouldn't be Ferris Bueller without him coming out and saying, are you still here? <laughs> Jonathan says, been watching the show from the start and the channel so much longer, so I figured it was time to send thanks for the years of enjoyment. Hope you all stay in good health and keep on inspiring the folks like me to engage fully with movies and media. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. We've got a Finn. Hey. Back in 2019, I took a road trip around the U.S. <laughs> I stopped by Zabriskie Point in oh, Death Valley. Oh, nice. And got you this magnet. There weren't any exploding mansions in sight, but the sunset was pretty good. Better late than never. Cool. Oh, Thanks a lot. When you go to our website, welcome to thebasementshow.com, you can see all of our episodes, and there are also PayPal donation buttons that you can click on, and you can make a contribution to this show to support this show with a one time or rolling monthly donation. This is something that helps us to keep making a show, and it makes us smile. Here is a short list of some of our rolling monthly donors Amy, Linnea, Rachel, John, Mark, Kendall, Benjamin, Tabitha, Jenny, Robert, Joe Walker Records and Things, Andrew, TJ, Vincent, Corey, Sarah, Stephen, Clayton, Vince, Vance. Daniel, Krista, Danielle, and Allison. The rest of our donors later in the show. Now is time for viewer questions. Topher Ray, do you guys feel that a good movie that you're enjoying can be too long? Yes, I do. It's when a talented director is self-indulgent. 
That's uh, when that can happen. An excellent example of a good movie that is too long is the Apocalypse Now Redux. Mm, yep. Yeah. Mm. It didn't have to be too long. Actually, at one point, it wasn't. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Well, the, the most famous example of this is Return of the King. Okay. But there's the question of, does a movie turn the corner into being bad if it goes on too long? Which I don't think Return of the King does. There's another Peter Jackson movie that does that, is, is King Kong. Oh my god. That is so long, and it's exhausting. Yeah, and... But there's a great movie buried in there. Mm-hmm. He just needs to take out a bunch of stuff. Oh, geez, the question I was going to ask is from David, who sent us those nice postcards. That's okay. Is there a movie or TV show you love and always recommend to people, but somehow almost nobody seems interested Yes, a Canadian show called Slings and Arrows. It's about a professional theater company in Canada who puts on a Shakespeare plays, and each season centers around one specific play. Brilliant comedy, it can be heartbreakingly tragic, uh, and again, the first season you get to watch a young Rachel McAdams fall in love and find herself, and what's better than that? Yeah, Sarah Polly's in that show as well. Oh, she shows up in the third season. I watched all three. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought the first two were great. I hated the third. Yep, me too. Yeah. There are things people won't think are realistic on that show. There is a theater party that they're having. Two rivals get into an argument, and foils are brought out, and they have a duel. This is not beyond the realm of possibilities if you are actors. <laughs> Puzzle the foremost scientist of Europe and America. He's really into role-playing games. He doesn't have very good social skills. He's the geek. How do you get a guy to be a geek? Bring out the geek. Geek's sleeping. Well, I guess you better wake him up. <laughs> when you've been around this Connie a little longer, you learn to quit asking questions. Connie's hate interrogative statements. I get the initials J E G. Right here, Missy. Well, well I'm Jeg. <laughs> Zena's going good. She's going well. Here's enough for a shot. Shot of morphine. Got it. I'm getting top carny dough right now. Oh, I wasn't talking about doing it in this mouse menagerie. You're not in a mouse menagerie. That's Disney Studios. Come on, Stan. Give Bruno a hand. Hey, Bruno. Well, there's only one thing this stuff will make you forget. What's that? Your social security um, number. Wonder where Zena is. Waiting for me at the hotel, I suppose. She's always waiting for me. Whenever I get home, she jumps out and attacks me like Cato. I just know drunk. Just how drunk are you, Pete, on a scale of one to geek? My name is Hotley. I own this attraction. And you're Lyndon Baines Johnson. <laughs> that fellow you were with, the maitre d' says he's a pretty big guy in this town. That uh, Ezra Grindle. Marianne? Ezra Grindle. <laughs> but would you ask the lady with the pearl necklace... If it shouldn't be Mrs. A.P., A for Addie. Nightmare Addie. Addie, this is absurd. This Eugene Ionesco play. You can't bluff me with that doctor patient baloney. I want that dough. Baloney, dough, maybe a little bit of lettuce. <laughs> oh, and some mayo. Oh, I need some mayo. Huh? Let me get you a sedative. St. Joseph's Hospital is not very far from uh, here. They'll take good care of you. Give. Okay, we have got two packages. Let's open one of them. That is from Peter out there in Seattle. I think I might know what's in it. Is it candy? Yes. Theo's Chocolates. Oh, boy. We are not sponsored by Theo's, but we will accept. Coffee and cream and turmeric spice. Salted black licorice as well. And the nice thing is, he sent us two of each. So there won't have to be some sort of haggling afterward. Thanks, bud. Oftentimes in our P.O. box, I get records, and when I get them, I listen to them. And I've got one that I listen to here. This is Alan Lomax's American Patchwork. Field recordings, 1978 to 1983. He was still doing this in the 80s. There were still fields to record in then. And most of these recordings sound like they were from the 40s or 50s. Not in terms of recording quality. They seem so ancient, and some of these people seem like they're 150 years old and you know he's still at this point in history he's still going out and getting this stuff and it's really an incredible archive that the man dedicated his life to uh, assembling rl burnside is on this he's a favorite of mine rl burnside mississippi hill country blues that guy plays 
on his electric guitar. A collection like this is such a pleasure to listen to because you'll get, you know, electric blues right next to hillbilly gospel, right next to sacred harp singing, right next to just this weird old lady singing on her porch, you know, yeah. and you it, it's all here side by side and it's all it's all America. Well, you should have come to Wisconsin, Alan. My dad was a pretty good singer. <laughs> we got more donors. Want to hear about them? I know I do. Eden, Ryan, Jeremy, Bridget, Austin, Jared, Liam, Elizabeth, Victor, Luke, Grant, Neil, Scott, Grace, Samuel, William, Brian, Brandon, The Factory Boys, and Jeffrey. With two Fs, Jeffrey. Now it occurred to me. As he rolled away, D equals R times T. Jeffrey, two F Jeffrey. I need some chocolate right now. I gotta be careful. You gotta be careful eating coffee flavored chocolate at night. Mmm. Yep. That definitely has coffee in it. That's all I'm gonna eat. We got one more package here. It's a big one. It's from Charles in Noblesville, Indiana. I believe this was stuck to this bag. This is for Craig. Oh, hey, that's nice. Looks like a stack of postcards there. Whoa, welcome to Egypt. We got carved hieroglyphics there. We got some guy sitting in a big throne there. Hieroglyphics. You, you get the point, pillars. So Charles has a bunch of gifts in here. And he has thoughtfully attached post-it notes to all of them. And in the course of shipping, they have all fallen off. <laughs> so I will do my best. First of all, there's an envelope. It says, a small start, monthly donations to come. Oh, this is a letter. Oh, this ain't a small start. Good Lord. That's a big start. Long time watcher, first time writer. This has been a hard month. I reached out to friends. I lost contact with only to find someone passed. Oh, no, that's too bad. So to the viewers, don't wait. Just make amends or reconnect. Yeah, that's good advice. No one worth a damn has ever looked back on our life and wished they had said, I love you less. Sorry to start on a bummer. That's okay. No, no, no. Page two is for Craig. All right. Craig, I have finished my investigation into the 1988 Oscar scandal. Share one. Deserved it as well. That's right. Iron Weed and Fatal Attraction were better movies, well, but featured so little of the actress up for the lead. Holly Hunter was fine, but the movie surrounding it was so cartoonish it deflated her efforts. But if I can get a thumb kiss to Scott Zinn and Robin Faulkner, all my love, Charlie Smith. There you go. I know Robin Faulkner. You do? I do. This note says for Lorenzo and Santino. Oh. I will try and determine what that is. I'm guessing it's this VHS tape, <laughs> The Elm Chanted Forest. That's great. The kids will have fun tossing this back and forth. <laughs> An evil force is out to destroy the forest. Somebody's got to help save the animals. A movie here. A comedy about the fine art of losing. It is The Grand. Woody Harrelson is in that. We have two books here. The League of Regrettable Superheroes and The League of Regrettable Supervillains. These are funny books, it seems. What are some examples here? Oh, no, these are actual heroes and villains from actual comic books. Moon Girl. Seaweed Queen. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Doll Man. Doll Man. <laughs> Colossus AD 2640. Sounds terrifying, but then you see him. Die. 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 This is Fortona. It is Lacrids by Bulo Coffee Candy. Mm. This is some kind of coffee candy. And then lastly, there is a box in here. Charles says, format, whatever you do, don't listen to this, then drive. You will get a speeding ticket. It looks like this is a soundtrack to Cowboy Bebop, the anime, famous anime. Oh, Look at yeah. that. Cool. Cowboy Bebop. It's always a, a title that has made no sense to me. It's in the future. Yeah. This doesn't look like cowboys or bebops. <laughs> that is a fun box of stuff, Charles. Thank you. Now what? Now we pack up and you go home. And I, I stay here because this is my house. That's how it works.